before our new system, we had three predecessor systems mm -hmm. dealing with different subjects. One was management, one was engineering, and one was health. Okay. And they had different requirements because the mm -hmm. kinds of research projects involved were different and had different risk levels in particular. Right. Um, and the key problem really was designing a system that would suit all three. The health system was looking at much higher risk levels, uh, liaison with hospitals, with patients, um, genetic stuff, uh, uh, human tissue act, all that sort of thing, right through to uh, management research, which might involve, I don't know, um, a couple of questionnaires about products or something. So it, it was a whole range of different things, different methodologies, different ideas. Mm -hmm. And it took a long time to put all that together to, okay. to build up the operating um, procedures, to build up the standards, and to have, it was an iterative process that went round and round and round. Once we'd got that, then matching that with a provider, I think, was mm -hmm. absolutely key. Someone that we could work with, someone who was flexible enough to okay. adopt our system rather than say, here is our system, right. take it or leave it. Well, I would say very good. Um, we've been delighted. Um, we've been delighted with your attitude, I think, with the speed that you've been able to respond to us. On the whole, I think it's been a very happy relationship and we're delighted with it. The, the response rate, are we all positive? Mm -hmm. um, when, you're, when you're kind of dealing with something where people, we promised our customers, if we look at the applicants as the customers, and um, a 24-hour turnaround with any inquiries they have on us, then we would expect the same for the people that we sometimes need information from, and we certainly get that. Right. It's the responsiveness, and it's also the continuous um, willingness to improve the system, not only right. on your own agenda, but for us to help influence that as well, in terms of what we're finding on a day-to-day -day basis and what's cropping up that would help us do okay. things that a little bit easier. The workload, the number of projects being considered, is about twice what it was before. Mm -hmm. So in a sense it's the disbenefits we've noticed of people who never had to do um, this ethical approval stuff now having to do it. Um, I think in due course, hasn't yet happened properly, we do feel the reporting will be better so that we will be better able to judge what is happening and where things are going wrong, how wrong they're going and so on. I would strongly recommend anyone who's thinking of doing the sort of thing we've done, of trying to find someone really good who can chase progress. Because otherwise, and it may be even worse in a big university, uh -huh. you could get absolutely stuck. Yeah. The reporting aspect is important to us so that we can capture exactly what is happening, uh -huh. what the time frames are, what the exceptions are, raising particular issues, raising aspects of training, with reviewers and staff and students so that we can tailor it exactly to what Cranfield does because it's a postgraduate only university it has a range of different um, projects we get some of the projects because of the specialist areas mm. are quite complicated so okay. I think it's, it's having that specific okay. knowledge of ethics and okay. applying it and the system helping us to capture that really Some of the really positive things I've had from academics is how slick the process is in comparison to um, what they experience when they go and maybe act as externals or are engaged uh -huh. in other institutions in some way. So when I've had some negativity in meetings where people are saying I don't think I should have engaged this is my, I don't think my research is applicable to this area, uh -huh. um, people have said do you not realise how easy they're making this for us in comparison to what it could be and uh -huh. I think that's that's really something that okay. I kind of I've learned recently in terms of what the rest of the sector is doing. Yeah. Take applicants first. Um, I suppose the key thing is it's been a change for people who've had to use the system because we've suddenly got an ethics policy that means all research has to go through the system. So we've got a situation where people are now involved in ethics that weren't previously. Um, so. I think that's quite critical in taking it into putting in context what the applicants have been saying because in terms of the user friendly side of the system we get very positive um, feedback on mm. that but it's actually the process of getting them 
engaged in that system in the first place and not seeing that as um, an extra level of bureaucracy that we've right. added for right. them for certain people who are doing kind of very desk based projects so mm -hmm. I think once we've got over that barrier and they've realised why we're asking them to do this um, ethical review and why all research should be going through this system then actually in terms of the system usage we get very positive feedback um, it's very intuitive um, they like the fact that it's a, a matter of it's a matter of 20 minutes and they're done mm -hmm. um, and the fact that they also get a very quick um, inf information very quickly on what level their risk came out as so they're not left hanging so that's really important um, from the reviewers point of view I would say um, they these are people that have chosen to do this as an additional um, role to their current mm -hmm. current job which already has enough demands right. um, so they're looking for a very quick easy system that's um, and they do have that, and I think within the cure system, um, they definitely have it and um, find it useful. But they're always very engaged with us to make sure that we know what can make their their jobs just that little bit easier. So, for example, one of the things being um, how they communicate with each other easier when they're in a in a panel um, mm -hmm. through the system, how they they can engage easier with the student. Um, the, the applicant themselves when they're actually through the system as opposed to having mm -hmm. to use me sometimes as a as a okay. go-between um, but that might be the education of the reviewers actually on how they use the system as well we might need to be doing a bit more training around that okay I think that's critical actually because I think when you introduce an online system there might be this assumption that all of a sudden the people aspect of it's taken away especially right. when you've got automatic approvals currently happening but actually what you actually you need to be doing, especially at the stage we're in, is supporting people through this process. Mm -hmm. And what's critical to me is making sure that the ethics system continues to have a very good reputation and builds mm -hmm. up that reputation within the university. Right. Because as soon as you get a bit of bad press out there, mm -hmm. um, that's all you need, yeah. and then people stop engaging. And so. Yeah. The way I see it is administ the administration behind the system is absolutely critical and yeah. resourcing that that yeah. um, as appropriate is, is critical as well because otherwise all you're going to do is people will try to engage, they won't get very far, they won't like right. the experience and therefore they'll back off completely, which yeah. doesn't help us to reach our, our aim of ensuring yeah. all research goes through yes, the system. Yes, but the problem is it's not always an easy sell to the people in charge of the budgets who have to... Mm. allocate resources. I mean, right. we're all dead keen and we're doing our best, but right. sometimes it's not so easy with them. Yeah. Yeah. I, guess the I, mean, other, I guess the other bit is that the, the informatica system or, or any electronic system is, is a support mm. and it's to facilitate what's really happening. What's really happening is that we're ensuring that all the research that the university does is at a high ethical standard, mm. that people are being educated, the, the questions that are asked make people think about what they're doing. The participants are being protected, the environment's being protected, and so on. So I think any sort of system is, is a support to that. Mm -hmm. And the, the, right. the people aspects are absolutely key, that you know, right. people buy into that as a philosophy. Yeah. And that the people working with the system and mm -hmm. themselves at Kinetica are all part of that team to ensure that the research is good research yes mm -hmm. so it's an add-on to your because your robust processes have to continue yeah exactly. it's not a substitute for your processes right mm -hmm. exactly but it aids that and, which is and, a, and, and hence the, the, the business analyst bit was saying mm. well, this is what happens this is what needs to happen this these are the loops that need to be in place mm. these are the checks mm. these are the audits this is where the reporting management information system goes to the committee and so forth so it's 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 almost making that real, it's making that concrete. Perhaps just worth saying that when we started on this process, and I think I was chairing it actually, yeah. I hadn't expected that that would be our decision. I thought our decision would be the conservative one of continuing with a system we had which suited yeah. Cranfield, which seemed to be working okay, there weren't obvious disastrous things happening, right. and yet unanimously we decided to change. And we're jolly pleased we did, I may say.